We can go on. Uh, okay. So, Mike, you, uh, okay. You, you do agree that there are things in the Gospels that are not accurate as related. You don't think the zombies it, thing happened? It, yeah, I mean, if we're going to say that every single word happened precisely no, I'm not as in that. a legal transcript, no, I'm no, not asking it, that. It I'm just asking, do you think there are things in the Gospels that are not accurate? I, I don't know. There's, I gave you some candidates that I think they okay. may be incorrect, but I would you, say the same of Plutarch. Do you think, yes, do you think that the zombies happened? I, I don't think if we had been there, we would have seen the zombies. Okay. I think that that is a rhetorical literary okay. device going on. Do you on. think there are other things we wouldn't have seen? So uh, give me an example. I'm asking you for examples. Um, is that the only thing in the Gospels that you think is not accurate? I didn't say it's not accurate. You're putting words in my mouth. Wait. If I said 9-11 was an earth-shaking event, you could say, well, that's not accurate, Mike. And I'm saying, you're missing the whole point. Right. Uh, so I'm trying to get my mind around this. So when Matthew says that the dead came out of the tomb and walked around, you're saying, yep. no, that didn't really happen, but you're saying it's not inaccurate. I, I'm saying it's the same kind of genre there as Peter and Pentecost when he's referring to Joel chapter 2 with young men having visions, old men having dreams, and Joel chapter 2 talks about the sun going dark and the moon turning into blood. No, I don't think that they thought the sun went dark, the moon turned into blood that day. I think they're using this as, um, as poetic, apocalyptic kind of Im okay. imagery. I'm just getting a little frustrated because I'm not getting a direct answer. Well, I'm, I'm trying to give you, I think you're mixing genres here and it's not fair. What's the genre of the, jo of the zombies? I think that this is apocalyptic kind of apocalyptic kind of uh, 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 symbolism that's put in there, just like when they talk about uh, eclipses of the sun and the comets in the sky on many of these occasions. Um, that we can show that these eclipses of the sun didn't happen, but the comet was actually there. They would mix these portents in order to highlight the intensity and the meaning behind the event. Okay, I don't know what you're talking about. So. Uh... Right. Well, uh, keep reading my book. No, I... I, I, I... <laughs> okay. I, I'm just sorry, Mike, because you, you don't think that the zombies came out of the tomb, but you want to That's say correct. it's still accurate. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. So, uh, uh, do, you, do you, you do agree that there appear to be contradictions in the New Testament, in the Gospels? I, I think that there are some that I cannot reconcile by compositional devices. And there what, are a what handful. stops you from saying there are mistakes? Well, there are some of them, like uh, let's just say uh, maybe the Quirinius one. That looks to me like that could very well be an error. Okay. But the one that you cited, like did, did they, Jesus first appear to them in Galilee or Jerusalem, I, I think that that has a, a reasonable explanation for it. And some of these things okay, have so really just, good explanations. Let me just review. In Luke, he says, don't leave Jerusalem. Right. And they don't. Yep. In Matthew, they're told to go to Galilee. Yep. And they do. Yes. Okay. So what's the reasonable explanation for that? Oh, I would think that uh, Luke is certainly compressing the account and setting everything in Jerusalem. It doesn't mean they didn't go to Galilee. Luke definitely knows that. I mean, as you said in your opening statement, you've got Luke having the resurrection, all of the appearances and the ascension happening on Easter. But Luke obviously knows it happened over a longer period of time because in his sequel, the book of Acts chapter 1, he says that he appeared to them over a period of 40 days. Wait, Mike, I'm just confused here. Luke says, don't leave Jerusalem. They don't leave Jerusalem. They're yeah. there until the day of Pentecost. But you're saying that he, that he thinks they did go to, to Galilee? Yeah. Why couldn't it be that he is compressing the account? Like, for example, I think that first appearance probably happened in Galilee, but Luke situates it in Jerusalem there when you compare the two okay. accounts. He's right. talking about okay. the same one. And he's putting okay. everything. You can just stop right there. So the appearance was in Galilee, but Luke says it was in Jerusalem. Because and you think that that's accurate? Yeah, he's compressing the account. I see what he's doing. There's no problem there. He's compressing the account for uh, economy of, of time or space, and then he's wanting to emphasize Jerusalem as probably the headquarters what would of the make church. It, what would make it inaccurate? Um, he appeared to them in Africa. <laughs> but why couldn't you say he appeared to them in Africa? Well, if he did, that'd be fine. But if exactly. he's... But he's doing a compression here, time compression. He's not it's compressing time, he's compressing places. Yeah, both. One says he did not appear to them in Galilee, and the other says that, uh, that one says that he did not appear in Galilee, the other says he did no, appear in Galilee. No, one says he appeared in Galilee, one says he appeared in Jerusalem. They don't leave Jerusalem. 
So how could they Luke, see him in Galilee? Because Luke is compressing the account. He situates everything in Jerusalem. Yes, he does. He obviously knows accurate. it, but he has it all on Easter, where it's, again, okay. Acts chapter 1, he he's obviously knows that he was there for a longer period of time. Yeah, in Acts 1, he's there for 40 days with them, and where is he? He's in Jerusalem. Yes. Well, no, it doesn't say. <laughs> yes, it, it does. It doesn't say that he was in Jerusalem the whole time. He ascended from the Jerusalem area on the Mount of Olives, but it doesn't say he was there the whole time. Okay. I see no reason why he couldn't have gone to to Galilee except, in the meantime. Except he says, stay in, stay in Jerusalem. Yep. And, and he could have said and that they're, they're after they returned from Galilee. All right, look, we're just arguing about these nitty things. Look, I mean, the no, I, I'm willing to admit that there are some potential errors in the New Testament. I just don't think that's one of them that's easily accounted for by compositional okay. devices. So my, que my final question, this will be quick. How many errors would it take before you would agree that they're inaccurate? I don't know a number, um, but as I said, I, you know, if someone on Facebook uh, or let's say your wife, that she has said some false things over time, but she is by and large very reliable, I'd say she's a reliable source, even though she gets things wrong once in a while. What's the number of things? What's the percentage? I don't know. But if it's small, I, th I have no problem saying it's reliable. We're not asking if it's inerrant. We're asking, is it historically reliable? Yeah, well, okay. So if I, if I go to MapQuest tonight to try and get someplace, and I know the MapQuest is, is wrong uh, 10 times, 20 times out of the last 100 that I've asked, I'm not sure I'm going to trust it. That, that's a good point, but that's the, the degree of precision that we expect out of something like a map. The debate is, are the Gospels reliable? But they're not maps. They're biographies. They're not, and, the, and, and biographies change the facts in order to make their emphasis. And that's why this is my favorite part of the debate. 